I would have said uh, like he was washed. He was going to miss it, let his country down. He sucks. He's slow. You know, just stuff around in that nature. I mean, it was a little, it was a little bit meaner than, than those words. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, but it was just, I was just blurring out everything. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Jump Shot. It's your boy, Johan Gomez, alongside my co-host, Tanner Tessman. And today we have a very special guest. We already announced it. Our boy, USMNT star, Kellen Acosta. Thank you so much for coming on, my boy. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Of course, of course. And as you guys always know, if you like and enjoy the content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, before anything, I was telling Tan, we just want to get it off, start it off right. So I have a story from the Academy. And I don't know what I was. I think Tanner was already there. So he must have been U16 around there. Obviously, I had joined since like U12, 10, since like U15. So you were always like the guy there. Um, so there was a story, and I don't know how much you remember of this, but apparently you were complaining to, I don't know if it was Jesse or who, but you were complaining how the Academy players nowadays felt too comfortable going into the pro section of the locker room to get like a hot tub <laughs> in or like advocates yeah. and stuff like that. And you were like, yeah, back in the day, if we had done that, like, nah, we would have gotten like killed. I don't know if you remember any of that. Nah, I definitely remember that. Yeah, cause I, I remember cause I was like, I'm walking in to, to get some treatment and it was just flooded with Academy kids. And I knew like back in the day, we weren't even allowed to be in the hallway. Like we had to ask permission to go to the hallway to go to the coach's office. And, Nowadays, uh, the academy kids are just like walking in, grabbing Gatorades or Advocate, whatever the drink was. And I was just like, what's going on, man? Like this, this is wild, but times have changed, right? So no, all good, all good. Yeah, That's I don't funny. know. How, I don't know how it is now with Tan. <laughs> I don't know how it is now with Tan, if they got strict on it again or what. Yo, Tan was nah, walking man. in there like nothing happened, man. He had his shirt <laughs> off. He was, he was chilling. <laughs> nah, never, man. I, I was scared to go back there because of this reason, because I was always scared to like see – like Oscar or whoever, like in the back. And I'm just like chilling with the pros, like not where I belong. Yeah. So I used to be scared. But now when I was there, it was different because we had North Texas. So like, oh, okay, it would be like the Academy, but they had an excuse. Cause like, they're like, oh, I'm with North Texas. But it's like, you're really not, but. Yeah. Well, I, like when I was th- talking about that, North Texas wasn't a thing yet. So it was just like, yeah. like, you know, you 12s, you 13s is walking in there. Just like yeah. going in the place. <laughs> yeah. It shouldn't be like that for sure. <laughs> That's crazy though. No, nah, that's funny. Let me let me ask you though. I mean, do you have any stories about the academy with Oscar or Lucci? I mean, I know he was there for a while. Oscar or Lucci? Uh, I mean, more so Oscar because he was my coach for for a number of years. But I mean, like like Tanner said, like he was a little intimidated. I was intimidated with Oscar. Uh, I knew. I guess this one story was. I don't want to name too many names, but. Uh, one guy, he had, he had long hair and we're playing a game. We ended up losing. And so he'd always like swooping into the side, swooping to the side. And Oscar literally killed him at halftime talking about, he's a pretty boy. He doesn't want to play all this. And that said guy actually came the next day, had his head shaved. Like Oscar killed him that bad that he ended up shaving his hair. But I mean, there's a number of stories. I mean, he, he was a very passionate person. I, I mean, I mean, uh, there's one we lost. I forget what game it was. I think it was it was a CONCAP Champions League uh, semifinal against Pachuca. We ended up losing in the dying seconds, like a crap goal to Chucky Lozano. I remember that. I remember Oscar Lilly broke everything in the locker room. <laughs> he threw everything everywhere. It was, it was, I mean, I was so scared, honestly. But, I mean, it just shows that he's just super passionate. He, I mean, he wants to win. And it was just contagious for all of us. So when he felt that, it was just one of those things where I was like, I'd rather stay on the field than go in the locker room because I knew it was going to be a straight this shit show, really. We want to take a quick break from the video to shout out our sponsor, BET Online. They continue to be the number one site for all your betting needs. Don't forget the NBA playoffs are going on right now. Who do y'all have winning the NBA finals? I got my hometown Mavs and Luka going all the way. But uh, on a serious note, make sure to go to your mobile desktop Check out BETonline.com and use the code BELIEVE for 50% off your welcome bonus. That's B-L-E-A-V for 50% off. Did you know Lucci when you were in the academy or no? Yeah, Lucci was my uh, coach for a year, but Lucci was more reserved. I didn't have any like crazy stories with him. Um, 
so he was more he was more chill than some of the other coaches than like Josema or, or Oscar. Oh yeah. Did you get Molina? <laughs> For sure. Did you get Molina? Molina, yeah, Molina as well too, a little bit. Um he wasn't like my direct coach, but uh, he was like assistant coach for like the U18 at a point. So, I mean, you know, Molina, he, <laughs> he, he could be a lot too. So, I mean, all of them, like I said, they're all just passionate. Is it weird now that, that, that Lucci's like with the national team? Cause like now when I see Lucci with the national team, it's, it's like weird to me, but I know he's like with before, like with the 17s and, but as, he, as I'm like, I had him as my head coach and in the Academy for like three years. Yeah. So it's like, now seeing with the national team is so weird to me. Yeah, in a way, it's like, you know, having that crossover. I'm like, damn, I just I just seen you and now you're um you were my coach back in the day, and now you're here, and now it's like a different dynamic, but it's always good yeah. to have a familiar face. It's like the same thing with Oscar. Oscar was my academy coach, and then uh he left and then came back and became the first team coach. And I had him again. I'm like, oh geez, here we go again. So it's just one of those things where it's like you just never know, honestly. So you don't want to burn too many bridges. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. True. Exactly. But um, going back to kind of what we were talking about, about the FCS Academy, I mean, all of us went through it. Uh, me and Tim at the same time, you a little bit before. I know we definitely looked up to you back then. I think you were already pro by the time we were there. But um, what do you think contributes to the fact that so many successful players come out of there? I know, obviously, you talked about it a little bit in Who's the Next One video. I don't know if you remember that video um, on YouTube. But, you know, what, what would be your answer now? Um, I mean, it's just tough to say. I think it's just like the water in Texas, man. We're just grooming some some good players. No, I mean, I just think that just like the competitive nature, just each and every day and just being able to, you know, have academy players train with the first team day in, day out, just being ready to make the jump. So when you transition to the first team, it's just seamless because you've been doing it for, for days, weeks, months on end. So I think that's a contributing factor. And then just the quality in the academy and just the players individually, just really passionate, really um, competitive, really just wanting to take that next step. And the eagerness for that has helped kind of pave the way. And then, you know, guys in the first team, you know, uh, you know, for me, it was, you know, Victor, Brian Leva, Moises Hernandez, Ruben Luna, guys I looked up to when I aspired to be so having that role model really helped like push me and drive me to get into the first team. And that's kind of how, you know, the academy is shaped. You're always looking at the the player ahead of you and you're trying to, you know, end up beating them. And I think having that competitive edge has, you know, pushed us along further and gotten a lot of uh, great academy talent and, and pros. Yeah, I agree with that. I think now though, it's, it's tough because it, FC Dallas kind of started uh you know, with the residency and they were kind of advanced in the early academy days, but now everybody's caught up. So I don't know if we still stand like, like now from the academy, like I don't know many players and obviously y'all don't either, but I don't know if we're, if we're at that same level now, like, I don't know if we got that talent. Like we, I mean, think about the guys that come out like Kelly yeah. West and like big names. I just don't think we're there right now, but it's good because that means the rest of the, the U S is caught up, you know? So yeah, I mean, they kind of even the, even the playing field a little bit. Um, but I think, I mean, the thing is important, like, it's for me, I just looking back, like, what you guys did in the academy and, like, the different tournaments you guys were able to do and, you know, have, like, the the GA Cup playing against, like, the Real Madrids and, and then Dallas Cup traveling around the world playing against the top teams. I mean, for me, that's kind of, like, changed the whole academy system. Because for me, like, we were going down to, you know, Houston, Austin, and beating teams like 5-0, 6-0. And, you know, and for us, it, I mean, obviously, I mean, not to discredit those teams, but it, it wasn't, you know, how it is now. And I think, I mean, that's a credit just to the whole academy system, credit to all the players. I mean, everything involved. So I think it's really just grown a lot. Um, and I think that's, I mean, that's contributing as well to, to, to like the, the whole academy and our academy and, and everything and having everyone, you know, really break through like the guys like Pepe, Jesus, um, you guys as well, Weston. I mean, there's so many guys. I mean, there's a whole list <laughs> that you can yeah. name, but I think it's uh no, it's been it's been great. I mean, hopefully, you know, in the coming years there'll be some some more of us coming through. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I think that was a good shout. To be fair though, I think Tan can and I can attest, even in our age group. I mean, we were beating teams like five, six, zero also. Yeah, but that was a critique yeah. that uh, 
when we would face like in Dallas Cup when we face Villarreal, for example, or these GA Cup teams, or these, even these Mexican teams that we seem to struggle with a lot. Um, it was tougher, you know, like it was like kind of like a little bit of okay, you're not playing, you know, Dallas Texans anymore. You know, it's like a real a real team. Um, right. I might have to take that out because that sounded kind of bad but uh, you know you know what I mean <laughs> no, you know what it's I mean genuine, though I mean it, uh, yeah you you play in these lesser teams and I mean you're not benefiting from beating teams 8-0 and moving on you know you you need the the competitive games where it's tight 1-0 2-0 you know you, you got to battle I mean we're scoring you know three goals four goals before halftime I mean that's that doesn't do you any good right that doesn't help you know develop you anymore so it's just like another game really like oh let's just get through this and to see what we got for the rest of the weekend type deal. So, but yeah, but like yeah. I said, having these having these tournaments definitely definitely helps. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you this though: I, there was a there was a phrase when me and Tan were in the academy. I don't know if it existed when you were there or if you agree, but they would always say that winning is a part of developing. Uh, you know, even if we were winning by a lot or whatever it is, like they would say, no matter what, you know, winning. Some people don't think that it's true, but winning here is a part of developing. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's like a fine line, right? I mean, obviously, we we compete each and every day to win and have that competitive nature really has driven us to be where we're at and be successful. Um, so, I mean, I think in the terms of people, like, don't agree with it because you're like, when you lose, you learn, right? But, I mean, it goes both ways. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, whatever I'm doing and whatever I'm involved in, I want to win. And sometimes it's our, our phrase that we always had, uh, with Busca La Forma in the academy, which means find the way. And usually find the way means find the way to win, <laughs> find the way to prevail, find the way to to get over whatever obstacle is in your path. And for us, it's like when we're competing in trainings, it's find the way to win, whether it's being in, able to adapt to, to other people's tactics, to adapt to the game, but find the way to, to, to get that win. So I guess it goes hand in hand for me winning is a mentality where it's contagious and that's something that's always driven me and and that's something that I've always wanted experience I, I hate losing so I think losing is kind of out of the question yeah I think it's definitely taking you a long way but uh I kind of want to talk about your uh your your transfers in the MLS how how have you <laughs> what would you describe them as if you could my transfers like you talking about my trades yeah, yeah. You're talking about like me specifically. Yeah, like how you felt in both of them as a player. I mean, as a player, I just felt I'm trying to find the word for it. Uh disappointed, uh kind of annoyed, uh angry in a sense. Um and then I'm I think I had like those those kind of thoughts at first, but realizing that you know each opportunity that that uh, that presented itself, I mean, it kind of helps me realign my focus. So I mean, I think those words are kind of negative, but then at the same time, when I had a better outlook, it's like um, it helped me have better reflection and have me you know have a better sense of positivity um a, a sense of eagerness you know to to tackle the next journey and to to move forward obviously you know being in Dallas I I, I didn't think I was going to get traded I didn't think you know then going to Colorado I mean that's the same thing didn't think I was going to get traded I mean for me I've always you know announced that I wanted to be in Europe but obviously you know it, it's a business in this league and things happen and things move forward and for me, I can't just dwell on what happened, but it's more so just trying to just make the most of every opportunity. And that's kind of just how it's led me down this path. And now I'm here at LAFC and, you know, I'm enjoying life. We're doing well um, and I'm moving on forward. I like that. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more direct than Sam, though. And you don't have to answer <laughs> if you don't yeah, want to. Um, a fan asked, though, what was the real reason that you left Dallas? Was a real reason. The real, the real reason, yeah. Because they didn't want to sell me. It's a real reason. And was they, it like a dispute? It, not necessarily a dispute, but it was like I I've dealt with this kind of my whole career, where um, I've been overvalued, 
And so, I mean, like, so when I was coming through the academy, I mean, I, I feel not to disrespect anyone that's gotten sold. I mean, I've had great years. I've been, you know, two-time MLS All-Star, national team player, this scoring goals, all this. But, you know, back in the day when I was playing, there wasn't so many guys in Europe. So having that jump in Europe was a lot, a lot more challenging than it is now. And so when you put a certain price point on myself, it doesn't make sense because teams aren't paying for that because they didn't believe in the league just yet. It, the league is uh, taking a huge turn now where teams are really looking into trying to get young talent, but it wasn't the same for me. And so I was kind of in that weird mix where, you know, I'm worth a lot, but, but they want a certain price point to make it make sense for them, but it wasn't realistic for other teams. And so I was just kind of just fed up. I was like, well, if you, don't want to sell me. Um, I was also dealing with the injuries. So I was coming back and I wasn't really playing as well. I was like, well, I, I don't want to be here. I want to, I want to move on. I want to get a new environment, a new challenge to help me make that step. Cause I felt like for me that I, I talked to, to the hunts and Oscar at the time that it was, I use the word kind of stale, which was Oscar was my Academy coach. You know, Hazema was my Academy coach and, like the whole system like was great, but I had those coaches for 10 years. And I was like, I need something different to help further my development. I need a new challenge. And if this wasn't the place where I could make that jump, then I need to, you know, transition to somewhere else. And I mean, that whole situation with Dallas was kind of crazy mm -hmm. because um, I literally played a game. I remember I played a game in Houston on a Saturday. And then that's the next day, Sunday was my birthday. And so I stayed the day in Houston. And, um, and so like, I'm hanging out with my friends and my family. And then I actually found out I got traded on social media. Like it, it actually leaked before I even knew. And so I had to come back. I had to drive right back to Dallas to then get all my stuff. And then I was on the first flight on uh, that Monday. To, to go to Colorado and then I was a Colorado player <laughs> it's pretty crazy I mean it's and it's kind of similar um, uh, from Colorado to LAFC as well where I'm, I'm in national team camp I get a phone call it's like yep and it's crazy how things work out but it, it's a business in a standpoint but I mean everything happens for a reason and I mean I, I don't regret any decisions that I've made or any things that I said um, I'm happy to be in LA. It's been great so far, but I mean, I've always expressed I want to be in Europe and it's always been a dream of mine. And hopefully like you guys, I know you guys are over there in Europe, but hopefully, um, I can follow suit one day, but we'll see. So, so got a, got a year here. Um, and, uh, yeah, move forward and we'll see what, see what happens at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, it's never too late, obviously. I mean, yeah, that's that's the big question that that people have with with you and the national team, because I feel I feel like a lot of players like you look at everybody in the national team. Like, for example, you have Pulisic, you have Des, they play for Barcelona and also the men's national team. You have Christian who plays for Chelsea and also the men's national team. But with you, it's always the men's national team. And then you play for LFC or it's then the men's national team. And then you play with Colorado. So I think all the fans like, bro, you've been with the team for so long. You played with the most qualifying games uh in the team as as well as two others but i mean how is the jump not there for you like how are teams like yeah well i kind of that's that's kind of where where like it was challenging um especially because the the clauses that i had from dallas to colorado were like if i were to get sold from colorado they had to split the fees with dallas and so it didn't make sense financially for colorado to do so and so for me yeah it's it's in, in that sense where i've kind of in this weird gray zone where, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I have the qualities and the capabilities of playing Europe, but the problem is financially, it, it has to make sense for all parties, right? And so that's kind of the, the, the biggest thing that's been happening for me where obviously you, you see guys like Pepe going for 20 million and, and you go see so-and-so going for X amount of dollars. They're like, okay, you try to base me off of those numbers but it's not realistic given you know everything else Pepe is also you know some years younger than me um you know and also like it's it's all kind of a I don't want to say it's like an equation but if I make x amount of dollars then 
my contract were this much, so I should be valued at this much, but so-and-so got sold for this much, so I should be in between that. So it's like, it's all very complicated. That's kind of, you know, I've been in this weird mix where, you know, uh, I'm almost worth more to, to, to trade than to sell. Because when you, because I don't know a lot of people know, when you get sold, the money necessarily, it goes to the team, but it goes to ownership first and ownership uh, decides what they wanted to do to it. But when you get traded, um, the money goes to the team and the, and the money goes to the actual team and then they can use that for, for, uh, for other contracts and such. So that's why, I mean, being, because I'm, I'm worth a lot in market. So I think a lot of, you know, it's easier for me to, to get traded in the league. And that's kind of just what's happened the last two times that's, uh, um, that's happened to me. Do you get a, when it comes to that, do you get a say, like, like when you got a call at camp, was it like, where am I going? Or did you know, like LA, did you know Colorado or, or you had no idea? No, no idea. That's, and that's part of, that's part of getting traded. You, like, cause you don't have free agency in the league. So you don't, you don't know where you're going. So like when, like when I went to, when I got from FC Dallas to Colorado, I didn't know. I just saw it online and then I was on the next flight. I mean, I, and from Colorado to LAFC, I didn't know until I got the call. And so you, you don't, you don't necessarily get to decide on where you go. But for me, it's like I said, just a mentality standpoint, like this is what it is. And I'm gonna make the most of it. And I mean, for me, thankfully, I'm you know in the best team in the MLS. And we're you know best fan base organization. I mean, everything is top tier. And I've, I mean, everyone's been so welcoming, and I've been enjoying every every second of it. But um, so for me, my focus is to just to win trophies here. And um, no, it's been it's been great. I mean, I've been I've been loving it. So I mean, LA is not a bad city to live in. So I've been. It's been uh, it's been a it's been a change, but it's been a, it's been a good change. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all the cities you went to are good. I mean, you you've only yeah, won I mean, trophies with lucky. Dallas, though, right? I won. Uh, I mean, I won a Western Conference with Colorado, so I guess last year it, that's considered uh-huh. a trophy. And then hopefully win some trophies here in LA. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, that's- now that I think about it, though, you've been you've been a pretty winning player, though. I mean, Colorado. Let's not lie. Like before you got there, I mean, they were kind of looked upon as like a poverty franchise, and now like they're pretty well set up under their new current head coach, right? Yeah, Robin. Robin's done a great job of just like transforming the team, and the team has really just bought into it, and we're able to make the most of each and every opportunity. And we had a really positive year, despite like losing, you know, um, against Portland. I mean, I thought that we had a team that could really really push to to win and obviously I mean that's that's football stuff like that happens and you know and then you know after that I get traded LA now it's a it's a new challenge but you know for me same goal same amb- ambitions is I want to win like I said find the way boost la forma find the way to win and uh and that, that's just what I've been doing my whole life really outside of football though you got Dallas which Frisco, you got Colorado, <laughs> and then you got LA, and you've you know you spent time in 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 Frisco or Dallas more, but uh, which so far in your experiences have been like the best city to live in out, outside of football? Outside of football, uh, I mean, I would say Dallas if I actually lived closer to downtown. I feel like I would, if I would have really you know explored uh, the Dallas area more, so not just being like Plano and Frisco. Yeah. Um, but me, I mean, I've done in the short span that I've been here, I think LA has been the best. I mean, I, I yeah. moved here during Super Bowl week. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I mean, I live in yeah, Hollywood. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. I live in Hollywood now. Hollywood is dope. I mean, I'm, I mean, I can go shopping, come into fashion. I mean, there's every restaurant. I took my son to Disneyland a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, quality. there's so much to do so many people to meet. I mean, I see celebrities walking down the streets all the time. It's just, it's just normal. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> they see, they see you like walking down the street all the time. That's what you meant to say. I know. They're asking, they're about to ask me for autographs, right? <laughs> hey, we had, uh, we had Eric Palmer Brown on like two episodes ago and they yeah. were playing PSG like in the, in the next coming weeks. And yeah. he was like, I don't know if we win, maybe Mbappe and Neymar are asking for my Jersey. <laughs> and we clipped it. Oh, dude, it's so funny. But uh, hey, you're you're 
you're famous now though like for sure in la like you get recognized a lot famous. in la you know i wouldn't say i'm famous but i mean some people saw me here and there more so than dallas or colorado i would say yeah yeah for sure yeah for sure. ain't nobody about... know you in colorado say <laughs> <laughs> Different uh, out there, yeah. That's hilarious. But let's talk about, like you said, the opportunities outside the field. Obviously, you're super into fashion. I mean, I mean, if Anthony can flash up some of his outfits, that's class. But um, I saw you just got a GQ interview, like the top 10, uh, the things I can't live without, right? Yeah, 10 essentials, yeah. What's up, GQ? I'm Kellen Acosta, and these are my essentials. All right, let's not lie. Like, if you're in Colorado or Dallas, you're not getting that opportunity, right? So obviously, I don't know. Yeah, just being but, in this market. I mean, that was during Super Bowl. That's when that's when I aired it. I mean, there's a lot of right when I got here, there's just a lot of opportunities for me. And I just kind of made the most of it. GQ being one of them, I'm like, this is GQ. I mean, this is something hey. that people just dream of doing. And you hey, know, the 10 essentials all, is that's a big time, huh? The yeah, 10 yeah, essentials. It was huge. I was it was actually crazy. I was hyped for it. Like, I was like, damn, like they really considered me to do this. Like, I'm all about it. And so and then, yeah, we've got some things cooking up. So just stay tuned for some more stuff with GQ. So, okay, I like that. Okay, yeah. little people. Yeah. But hey, with the 10 essentials, though, like, with, are those like your 10 essentials? Because some people My be saying essentials. stuff. And I'm no, like, there's like, no that's way. Like, that's no, that's legit to me. I mean, like I candles, my, though? Yeah, I'm a can, I mean, I got one right here. Were you stressed about it? Were you stressed Jumbo about it? Like, were, you like, were you like thinking about okay. it? Like, oh, what are my 10 essentials? Are you new straight off rip? yeah no i mean at the same time it's like people are gonna be like oh my phone oh you know yeah. my ipad i mean it's it's actually like i wanted things that were like specialized to me and things that people don't really know about like i like if you come into my house i have candles in every room and i mean i have my um uh i i eat peach rings i love peach rings like a lot of people don't know that i mean a speaker because i love music so whenever you're traveling i have a speaker um i got my toiletry bag um i usually have a watch i'm not wearing right now but i have a watch on me i mean everything i mean that's it's actually like it's legit like that's me that's i mean it's i mean it's nothing's fake about it that's just that's what makes me me really so yeah no it's dope are you are you a big watch guy though or no yeah big watch guy it's, what's it's the collection saying? habit uh right now i probably have like eight watches nice okay. watches okay um, okay yeah okay. some rolexes i didn't i didn't know about the watches Cartier. man yeah. i came to to italy man and you know <laughs> obviously you know like, yeah i want to get a rolex i want to get like a cool watch whatever and obviously it's you know it's in my sights but when i came here bro and these guys are like yeah i got like 15 rolexes and i'm like I'm like, yeah, it's an right, expensive right. habit, but at the same time, it yeah. holds value or even, even can make you money. People buy and flip watches, like, like yeah, shoes, yeah, basically. it's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, we got to get in these shoes, though. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Busio is crazy, man. This guy, <laughs> yo. Oh, man. Busio this guy is crazy. crazy. <laughs> he'll, he'll say, like, he'll be like, he'll be like, yo, so whenever I'm depressed, I just open up, you know, like, GOAT or I go on uh, Chrono 24 and I just, I just click buy on something. He's like, I don't even know what it is. He's like, but it Yo, makes me. He feel might better. need an intervention. He needs an intervention. I mean, he sounds like Yo. he's he's depressed a little bit. You need to check up on him. He's no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> he is screaming for help for real, for real. But uh, no, we got to talk about these shoes though, because obviously fashion. We'll get into this, but these shoes. I heard you got a big collection. Yeah, yeah. I probably, yeah. I probably got it. At least a couple hundred or so. That's crazy. Okay. I saw that one video you did uh, in Colorado. I don't know what channel it was. I saw it a long time Soul ago. Soul Savvy, probably. Probably. But you were talking about, like, all these uh, pairs that you have. It was crazy. It was insane. You got You're some, talking, uh, yeah. like, like gems? Like, these are, like, your, your yeah, favorite what's, like, top the exclusive? Three? Well, I mean, there's one shoe that I've never worn before. It's just chilling in a box. I have Red October's. I, they haven't touched the ground yeah <laughs> are you breaking them out for a special occasion i don't even know what to do with them to be fair like i'm <laughs> like should i wear them should i sell them should i just let them just sit on some ice right now like I, I i mean i don't even know they're i mean if anything those are my gems and i have some tom Sachs, uh mars yards that are i mean i actually wear them i kind of beat them up a little bit but in terms of gems probably the red october is the, the yeah like the, the top ones and everything else i mean 
shoes are made to be worn, so I've just been wearing them. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think, of course. So. I think recently Tyler Adams just shouted you out as uh, the best, along with Chris Richards, the best, having the best sneaker collection on the on the USMNT recently. Oh, man, I'm humbled. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, a lot comes from those guys. No, I could always bring it. I'm like, all right, so his camp's coming. I'm like, oh, I got to bring a couple of shoes. I'm like, oh, I always bring something different. Usually like a nice little dunk to, to match whatever fit we're having. Or, um, you know, I usually pull up in all black and I'll have something flashy on, but that's – Shoes has always been my thing ever since I was little. I mean, I've said in, in interviews in the past where if I got a new pair of shoes, I'm sleeping with them on. I'm, <laughs> I'm hugging them or whatever. Like, I, I love them so much that I've been like that since I was, like, five years old. It's always been yeah. a passion of mine. That's beautiful. No, but we got to talk about this as well. Like, you said you pick them out, but I'm hearing some things about you having a stylist. Could you break that down? Yeah, stylist and a and a creative director. He's all in one. He's my brother CJ Mitchell. So I mean, let me let me break it down for people because people think that because you have a stylist, I mean you can't dress, right? But for me, <laughs> fashion fashion is a sport. Let me put it metaphorically. But, all right, let's break it down. <laughs> so fashion is a sport, right? And a stylist is your coach, and I'm the player, right? Okay. It's just like in soccer, right? I know how to play the game, but the coach helps better you. Right. And put it, get you yeah. out of your comfort zone, teaches you new aspects of the game, little details to help you step up your game. And the same thing with the stylist. The stylist is the coach. So Steve, CJ is basically my coach and helps me step out of my comfort zone and helps me, you know, push boundaries that I normally wouldn't do before. So that's that's kind of how I break it down for people that think that having a stylist means you don't know how to dress and all of this. But I've I've always been in fashion, but CJ is really has upped, upped my game a lot more and helped me in these little details that helps, you know, push boundaries, get me out of my comfort zone and, and um, you know, has helped me kind of pave the way into being uh, more fashionable, helping me getting, you know, GQs, different editorials, different opportunities. So, yeah, I've been, been cooking up some stuff and hopefully, you know, just, you know, just keep building and want to be, you know, on a runway show <laughs> one day. That'd be kind of dope. That's no, love. Yeah. Problem. That's crazy. I'm I looking like at your outfits now. Yeah, that's yeah. An al- that analogy sick. I'm looking at your outfits now, though, and they're class. But let me ask you. So I see you in some futuristic type vibes, some like, you know, suits, different. What do you think looks best on you? What's your favorite kind of style to rock? For me, like, I kind of, I think that that's the biggest thing that people, people uh, don't understand where they, the clothes wear them rather than they're wearing the clothes. So for me, like, I kind of base, like, my style off of my game. And I feel like I'm a versatile player. So I like the versatility of being able to go into streetwear, to wearing suits, to, you know, athleisure kind of combination of them all. Um, So, I mean, there's nothing that I I would say that, you know, that I look the best in. But it's – I kind of like them all. It just depends on the occasion. I mean, I like a nice little suit, depending on the occasion. I like, you know, a little bit of streetwear. Um, I'm not necessarily into, like, huge designers. Like, some some people are that are, like, Gucci down to Dior I, down. I was, I was just about to ask yeah. you, like, how do you balance, like, designer clothes with, like, normal, like, not as out there clothes? Yeah. So, I mean, if you know, like, I'm more subtle with, with my stuff. I mean, a lot of people don't, don't necessarily know what I'm, I'm more put together, not too flashy. That's kind of always been my thing. I don't, I don't like wearing loud things because that doesn't really complement like my personality. So I'm, I'm more so more subtle. I mean, I, I wear designer here and there, but it's nothing, nothing too crazy. I think when people don't wear designer and look good, like in, in a bunch of your photos and stuff, it shows more that you can like dress because like when people buy like Louis Vuitton or whatever it is, it's like, I mean, you're, you yeah, bought it because like, it's, it's Louis, you know. Yeah, right. it's easy. And, it's look, and it looks like it's just straight off a mannequin. I'm like, like I said, like yeah. the clothes are wearing you, you're not wearing the clothes. And so yeah. that's, I mean, for me, it's like what compliments me more. So I'm not going to be, you know, a Gucci track suit with like a Gucci bucket. Like that's, uh, that's not, yeah. that's not my style. It's not my vibe. So. Is he like at any of your uh, national team teammates with that one or what? <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> hey, it, is he though? And they feel like I'm attacking them. Then that that's their own problem. I was I didn't name any names. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Is he though? Is your style is like 
is he just like sending you stuff? Are y'all having like talks about like, yeah, this looks good. This is what I saw like in the lookbook or are you like, is he like, you're wearing this or how's it, how's it, how does no, it work? It's more out? like a team. It's like, we, we both come together and we collaborate. We have a vision. It's like, okay, let's say like I, I did street where, you know, last event it's like okay maybe let's change it up like, let's you know wear a suit and i look and see uh, at my suits i'm like, okay i haven't worn this suit how can we partner this to give this an extra detail little oomph like whether it's like a pop of blue to the tie to the pocket square i mean we kind of collaborate in a sense of you know we all have our our, our own visions and we all kind of we just come together and you know how ha- help like um detail and help you know give that added dimension um that makes it pop and stand out i think it's so important it's for the, so the collaboration yeah i think it's important for the fans to know that it's like to know how it works because i i bet you do get a lot of things saying like oh he's got a size he can't dress or people probably think like i don't know every day like you're you're choosing what you wear every day right like it's not like he's y'all are saying like all right to I'm train like, you're wearing like, this. What? Nah, yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, okay nah. yeah because i people may think this and I don't want them to be like misconstrued with it. You, like, you know how to dress. Like, you're a stylish guy. And obviously, it's not like an everyday thing. Like, you just, it's not, he's not your mom laying out your clothes. So. <laughs> nah, yeah. nah, not like that. Well, yeah. l- I like the analogy you. you put, though. That, that yeah. clicked for me. Let me ask you this. I don't know if this is true. I don't know where I heard this, but did Cole start using your stylist or he started using a stylist? I don't know if that's true. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, he used CJ for a little bit, but then I think he he stopped using him for whatever reason. But yeah, Cole Cole's been up in up in his game a little bit. I've been I've been peeping a little bit. He's been more put together. He's not on his like uh, little boy swag. He's more of you know grown up <laughs> little more boy swag. Yeah, I mean you know little boys. I'm talking about like you know picnic Abercrombie flannel with some jeans and like some Sperry's type deal but he's like on his you know more you know sophisticated grown man business so he's 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 really done his thing so shout out to anybody Cole. anybody out there wearing Abercrombie like don't take it to heart like Kellen he's this a, is a he's professional nah, he's a professional, he's a professional Abercrombie, you know though? Abercrombie is really they're changed. stepping it up aren't they're, they they're actually legit I was talking about more of like the you know, you remember like back in high school, we were wearing like the like the, the, Hollister. Like the plaid, the Hollister, yeah. like that kind of vibe, like that kind of yeah. Yeah. So that's what. Where, I where do you the no <laughs> second? Now, where do you find a stylist though? Well, I actually got introduced to him by one of my friends or ex teammates. We played on the national team together, and he knew CJ because he went to some fashion show, and so he introduced me to him, and then. um yeah, then I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll see what he's talking about. Talk to CJ. And then now, I mean, he's became like a brother to me. I mean, he comes to my house for weeks on end and we just hang out and kick it more than it went from being like a business to, you know, actually, you know, like part of the family type deal. So it's uh, not it's been good. So it's not like, you know, super formal. Like it's, it's relaxed. I talk to him probably every single day. I'm not even just nice. about fashion, just about life and stuff. So it's been cool. That's dope. That's dope having someone like that in your corner. Um, but I want to transition to the national team now. We've been putting it off for a little bit. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with a little bit of a serious question. Um, and, and this is a little bit of a personal story. So I think when Greg first joined, I don't know if you remember this, you, you got called into camp. And I don't know where I read this, and I'm paraphrasing, so nobody crucify me if I'm saying this wrong, but I swear <laughs> I read this article. And I don't know if you didn't perform well in camp or whatever, but all of a sudden I'm reading like Greg supposedly saying like, oh, not that he'll never get called back again, but, you know, he's going to have to fight or something like that. He's going to have to show like what he's capable of. And this, it took me aback because I was like, you know, you were you and you were having a good moment and stuff like that. And so all of a sudden you, maybe you go a little bit without getting called up and now boom, a blink of an eye, like you're almost irreplaceable on that team. But how do you deal with originally? I don't know if you saw that back then when he first joined or if you knew anything about that. How do you fight through that and how did that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, I was I was gutted really because in that camp, it was his first camp um, as head coach and I get called into Jan camp. So I'm like, I'm eager. I'm ready to, you know, try to stand out, ready to make my mark and impress him. And it didn't, it didn't go well. I actually got sent home that camp like a week or two in. I was like one of three guys that left camp early 
and it was super disappointing honestly like it, it killed me because in my head I'm like you get this whole sense of doubt like am I good enough you know am I ready for this like what's going on am I you know I'm like why like I kind of played the victim card at first like why me oh it was this oh it was that oh he has his favorites oh you know it's easy to kind of go down that rabbit hole but it was just it's one of those things where I mean thankfully I have you know a great supporting um support system that really kind of snapped me out of it like yeah this happened now what am I going to do with it so shout out to to Clint Gady and and Aaron Bird who really like helped me to change my mindset of just like yeah you're just gonna have to just put your head down buckle down and just work hard and so for me it was like those those guys have really helped me kind of flip a switch because it was easy to kind of just put the blame on others at that point um, and easy to just go in the sense of doubt where, um, you know, and go down this rabbit hole of just not playing well and this, that, and blaming others. So I really just, just to continued working and just hope, hope, just hoping and waiting for, for my moment to, to, to come. And the next time I got my moment, which is to make the most of it. And it happened, I think a year or two later, two years later, and been in the team ever since. And I, I, I knew the feeling how it was to be on the outside looking in. And I don't want to feel like that again. So, you know, I've been working hard each and every day to, to not have that feeling again. And it's been it's been uh, it's been working out. So I'm just hoping to continue on that path, really. That's dope. It's dope that you've taken also like a role of leadership within the group. Obviously, now you were, like you said, you were on the outside looking in. And my brother personally actually wanted me to just thank you because he said when he went into camp in December, he was a little bit, you know, tentative. And and I think when he first linked up with you, he was he thought you would be a little bit more like full of yourself almost. And um, and he said uh, that you like you welcomed him and like spoke to him like just another guy. So um, he wanted to thank you for that. But um, yeah, talking about the USMNC, someone asked us <laughs> and I, we already talked to you about it, but who runs the group chat? Like who's the leader of that stuff? Dinner reservation and stuff like that. Who, who handles that? Uh, it kind of just depends. Cause usually, I mean, when it's like qualifiers and stuff, uh, we're not really allowed out too much cause we're kind of in our bubble. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, it just kind of depends. So like there's certain guys that hang out with certain guys you feel more comfortable with, you know, longer, um, and then they're like, I guess it kind of depends, really. Uh, I mean, DeAndre's in there a little bit doing his thing. Aaron Long, Walker, um, kind of the older, kind of the vets kind of take over. And then some guys just send just like banters. There's some funny stuff like Tim Weah. He's, he's a clown. <laughs> so he sends like some some random stuff. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know if there's like a certain person that has really taken over. Maybe Tyler um but yeah I think it just depends I mean you kind of just stick with your kind of you have your your guys you're close with and kind of just have your own inner group chat from there and then you uh, do your own thing with them let me take it back a little bit what do you think of Tim Weah's uh fashion what I think about it yeah <laughs> I, I think he dresses well he does his thing he puts together some fits I think people uh, he's a little bit flashier than most, but I think it suits him. It suits his personality. Uh, I think it's good style. He's he's doing his thing out there. You said uh, fashion is a sport. Is there a little bit of competitiveness there, like seeing who dresses better? Uh, yes and no, I guess. Because I think fashion is is defined by your own self I mean you can think you can wear whatever whatever think you're fashionable and you can and I can wear whatever and certain people will be like no nah, it's ugly so I think it's kind of defined on what you think is fashionable so yeah. but for me I'm the most fashionable <laughs> <laughs> hey that's where it all starts the the confidence like you said yeah, you gotta the wear the clothes I mean, yeah you gotta wear the clothes you gotta wear the clothes hey but we all gotta right. talk about Europe again we gotta talk about this man when are we like okay so i wanted to ask you when we we're talking about the transfers and stuff but is there like a like you said europe going to europe is your is your is in your dreams like it's one of your goals but is there like a certain country or team that's like i gotta go here um 
I mean, for me, uh, I mean, I've always wanted to play in England. I mean, I watch the Premier League week in and week out. I watch as many games as I can, and that's always been a dream of mine, just in terms of transitioning from being in the States to, to, to England, where, you know, speaking the same language, similar culture, um, everything about it. I mean, that's, you know, always been a dream of mine. That's, that was a, that was a, a league that I, or even the championship that I envisioned myself playing in, but I'm, I'm not opposed to any other leagues really. But um, yeah, I think England was, you know, the spot that I, I really wanted to be in or still want to be, nothing's changed. But you was say opposed, like, yeah, you go ahead, John. It was their interest. Yeah. Yeah. Can you name any any names, or do you know any names of teams? Yeah, I know of all the teams that put in bids for me, but I don't want to, you know, talk about it too much. I've already went down a whole rabbit hole of saying all this. I don't want to open up too much because it asks more questions and stuff, and it's just a mess. <laughs> any current though? Right now, I mean, not right now, but before I I, I could have left this past winter to to the championship, but obviously it fell through. And that whole thing was kind of crazy. I don't want to speak on it too much, but basically I got traded before, right before, I think a day before, hours before the offer came in for me to leave, supposedly. So that's why. But um, that's why, I mean, I kind of voiced my frustration um, a little bit. Because for me, on I'm, Twitter, I'm right? Respect- yeah, I'm a very respectful person. Like I said, I, I put my head down, I work, I don't say anything. I'm super respectful. Um, I care about my teammates. I care about, you know, everyone around me in my community. So for me to say something, you know, should be saying enough. Um, but like I said, I mean, everything happens for a reason and I'm in a, I'm in a great environment and I'm happy, happy to be here in LA and not just on the field. Things have been very positive, but off the field too. I was able to do GQ and a number of other things. So, um, it's just another step of my career, but I'm enjoying every second of it. All right, let me ask you this actually, because this is an important question. So, <laughs> so Tanner's talking about Europe, and yeah, obviously you want to go to Europe. And I asked this question last week to Julian Araujo. It's almost the same thing. You're super consistent in the national team. You know, knock on wood, you stay healthy. You're most likely going to the World Cup. Um, you know, you're living your dream life. A lot of people's dream life. You're in LA. You're the face of the franchise, basically. As soon as you got there, your son seems happy. You seem extremely happy. You know, doing GQ, all this stuff. You know, let's be honest. You're making a good amount of money. You know, what even makes you want to still go to Europe when you have everything that you could want here, or where you're at? So for me, like it, it goes back to before I even signed pro, right? You know, I could have gone to college. But I was like, this is what I want to do. My dream was to always be a professional athlete. I was able to achieve that. And then my next dream was, okay, I'm a professional athlete here in the MLS. My next dream is I want to somehow play in Europe. Okay, I wasn't able to achieve that. But I was like, okay, if I can't play in Europe, I want to be on the national team. And I want to do whatever I can to play on the national team. Because I was doing youth teams, but I want to be on the senior team, represent my country. And I want to play in a World Cup. And so for me... I'm an ambitious person. And for me, I set aside goals and I want to achieve them. One being playing a World Cup, playing in Europe. And it's not even necessarily about the money. It's about a dream of mine that I've had since a little kid that I want to achieve. And so that's always been a passion of mine. And and so, excuse me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I have opportunity to, to play in a World Cup this year. Uh, and hopefully I can achieve that. But like I said before, I've always wanted to play in Europe, and that's something that I want to cross off my list. And and um, I'm still hoping to achieve that. It's not even about just just being a professional athlete and being in my environment. I, I like being somewhere where I'm uncomfortable because being uncomfortable promotes growth. And so for me, that's the whole point. You can't just be content with where you're at because you'll be stagnant. I want to be somewhere that's going to keep pushing me and keep elevating me. And so... I know that, you know, being in an environment that I'm in now, you know, I have more, more pressures. I'm in, you know, with a fan base that, you know, has high expectations of myself and the team. And so that helps me grow in that sense. And, and for me as a professional athlete, you know, you want to take that next step, which is to play in Europe. And then Europe brings other challenges and stuff. So that's kind of just been my overall mentality and overall mindset, whereas I just want to grow. 
I just want to, you know, push the boundaries and, and help pay in the way and, and being that role model for, for everyone in my community, being a role model to my son that, you know, if you aside, you set aside goals and dreams, you know, you got to do whatever you can to achieve that. And so that's what I've been doing. It's been, it's been a bumpy road, but uh, it, it's been my road, been my journey, but it's not, it's not done. It's not done yet. So I'm hoping to, you know, hopefully, you know, in the coming years, I can achieve that one day. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about football, though. Like everyone has their own path and you can still get to the same destination. You know Definitely. what I mean? So I, I respect that a lot. But you spoke about your son. How much does he influence these kind of decisions? Yeah, he's a big influence. I mean, obviously, you know, once you have a little one, it kind of changes your mindset because you're not just thinking about yourself, right? You're you're thinking about life for them and you want to set them up um, as much as possible. For me, I, I want to just be a person that, you know, he looks up to and is proud of. And I want to be a person that, you know, that's just given up, that that's a victim, that's that plays the whole victim role that, you know, um, that stays stagnant, doesn't push myself. I want to, like I said, I want to be that person that, you know, he wants to aspire to be. And so the way that I know that I can do that, because I can obviously support him financially, but it's more so it's deeper than, than money. Um, so I, I want to be, you know, like I said, someone that he aspires to be someone, even if it's not in the soccer aspect, but just in life in general. And I think that that translates to, to, to everything that, like I said, if you set aside a goal, big or small, you do whatever you can to achieve that. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to just show him, show him the way. Yeah, it's very for sure, bro. And also this year, I mean, it's World Cup year, the World Cup. I anything mean, can happen this tournament it could launch you to the biggest stage yeah. yeah anything could happen really but i mean the the hardest part is is just getting there i mean the qualifiers were, were brutal i mean i was in the last cycle that didn't qualify and i mean it hurt it hurt and i had to wait another you know four years for this moment and i was able to be part of it but now it's another six months to you know make the team i mean it's not just because i played in these games doesn't mean i'm guaranteed to go to the world cup i gotta perform week in and week out so yeah it's a long road ahead sitting long you know what six months now so you gotta do everything in my power to be there and um you know it starts with each training each day each game um uh, gotta just make the most of it for sure. I think you'll see that uh that chum chat blessing. Hit. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, you guys talked about it, so yeah, let's let's make it happen. Hey, let's hey. just talk about Eric Palmer Brown. You obviously, you know Eric Palmer <laughs> Brown. My yeah. guy didn't post on Instagram for four or five, six years. He came on the podcast. <laughs> he got inspired through the chum chat no, he's blessing, active. and he and he he's active. He posted on the gram. Shout out Eric Palmer Brown. Amazing <laughs> stuff. Amazing stuff. To be honest, that's so, all I tell you. He needs that 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 helping hand, and I think exactly. you guys were were that helping hand for him. So I'm glad he's he's back on back on the gram because we need some more EPB in our lives. That's for sure. Exactly. This, this is what I'm saying, though. This is what I'm saying <laughs> about you. I think the chump chat lesson will come in perfectly. You're talking about England, wanting to play in England. What better way to impress the England country than to play England and shut down Phil Foden, Declan Rice, Shaq Grealish? I mean, come on. Like it's written in the stars, literally for you. As soon as you do that, I think I don't know. United needs a six slash eight. That's all I'm saying. You know, you never know. Yeah, anything, anything can happen, right? Anything can happen. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a tough game nonetheless, but it's gonna be ready regardless. And we talk about these these qualifying games, and these games are crazy, right? I mean, playing away in certain countries, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. But the one thing that obviously great player, talented, but there's one thing that elevates you to a lot of the fans and a lot of the the people watching and the, and the players as well in the field and it's your way to just get in people's heads like and waste <laughs> time and and manage it how like when you're thinking about it like is it actually something you plan out like on the pk versus mexico or is, is it just natural to you or is it like you're thinking about how to how to help the team there no nah, just kind of in the moment right it's just Sometimes like that, like the, that was a big moment, especially in the Mexico game is, you know, that, that could change the game completely. You know, if he scores a goal, so I'm like, whatever I can do to get in his head, to kind of put him off, to get him thinking, you know, whatever 
you know, advantage we can get, I mean, I'm willing to do so. I mean, it's not something I'm like, you know, meditating before a game, like I'm going to do this, that, or the other. It's one of those things where it's just in the moment kind of happens. And I just happen to be in the thick of it really. <laughs> and not that I, I try to impose myself in that sense, but it's just, you know, it, it just comes with the game and it just kind of just happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think that part of the it's game beautiful. is called like, yeah, something we call like street smarts. And I know you know a lot about it. And I think that's what kind of like Tan said elevates you past maybe some of the younger guys who don't necessarily have that. But I, not to discredit you at all, but how much do you think that came from, you know, growing up in that FC Dallas Academy with a lot of Hispanic kids, you know, who have that kind of like sense of the a game? You edge. Know? Yeah. 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 I mean, in, in a sense, yes, yes. And it's just one of those things where it is, you know, just being in an academy, we're always just talking smack to each other, whether you're making a PK or you're doing like a shooting drill, like you're like always making like side bets, like, oh, you suck, like I'm scoring more than you. Just having that competitive edge and advantage. And I've kind of just carried that throughout my years, whether it's in trainings, whether it's in games. Um, it's all in good fun, really. It's just it's just kind of part of it. And it's kind of just just driven me. And it's kind of something that I've always carried with me um, throughout the years. Do you speak any Spanish? Did you talk to Guardado in Spanish or in English? No, I talked to him in English. Okay. I, I, I mean, I could I speak a little bit of Spanish, but to really get my point across, I had to say it in English. Yeah, I mean, imagine. I, he, speaks, he speaks English. If I said it in Spanish, it would be even better. Yo, imagine what <laughs> you gotta nail that down, there, bro. You got to nail that imagine, down. Imagine, bro. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, I mean, that was just in the moment. I mean. Like I said, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I was just whatever I could say and think of on the spot is it just came out. Just so came what were you out. saying? What were you saying? Man? I was just saying uh, like he was washed. He's going to miss it. Let his country down. He sucks. He's slow. You know, just stuff around in that nature. I mean, it was a little it was a little bit meaner than, than those words. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, but it was just I was just blurring out everything. So let's yeah. let's get to the bottom of this. Do you think he's washed? Do you actually think he's washed? <laughs> I don't think he's washed. He just won a trophy with with Betsy the other day. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. he's not washed. I mean, he's a guy I have a lot of respect for. It. Don't get me wrong. It was just one of those things in the moment. I was just trying to just put him off of it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's he's had a great career and he's continuing to do so, winning trophies and mm -hmm. such. But, uh, yeah, it was just in the moment. Even if it was freaking Messi taking the PK, I would have found out something to say to him. doesn't matter. Ronaldo, it doesn't matter. I was going to try to do whatever I can to put them off. Well, let me, let me ask you this. So, obviously, the rivalry between Mexico and U.S. is a lot bigger than just what happened on the pitch. But as far as the players go, obviously, there's bad blood on the pitch. But is this something that just stays within the four lines? Obviously, after last game, you see Pulis just tapping up with Chua. You know, after y'all leave the pitch, is there still a little bit of bad blood or is it like, all right, we'll leave it on the pitch? Yeah, it's more so on the pitch. Obviously, you know, it's a sense of, you know, we're playing Mexico. We got to be up for it. Like, we don't like these guys. It's, you know, for bragging rights. You're playing for your country. But it's not necessarily like, you know, I play Mexico and then my team is Carlos Vela. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not carrying that, you know, towards it. Even if he's in the game, it's just, it's part of the game. Um, it's a rivalry. You're going to do whatever you can to win the game, but it's not necessarily any hatred towards them by any means. We'll transition into, we don't want to hold you off too long. Obviously, you know, you're a busy man uh, with GQ and all that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you want to transition into our success question. It's obviously, we ask all of our guests. Everyone has their different answers. So we want to ask you, what's your definition of success? And do you think you've achieved it yet? Oh man, I think success is kind of open ended. I think success is, is is specifically defined to yourself, right? My success is different than your success. So I think it's it's usually setting aside a goal, small or big, and achieving that. So for me, I I've been successful, but but to achieve the high success is to be in a World Cup and in, in Europe. That's what I classify as success. But in terms of um, a little kid having big dreams and, and being where I'm at now, I mean, in that sense, um, that's success. But for me being here, I mean, I want to achieve more. 
So I think to answer your question, success is, is something that's defined to you. Only you know what success is to you and, you know, how you perceive it. It's not, not anyone putting boundaries on you or limits on you. It's how you see yourself. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I view it, really. So you think you're successful? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, you go from starting at five years old, dreaming of playing in a stadium under big lights with fans. I've done that. I've done that. Playing for the national team, I've done that. Playing against the best players in the world, I've done that. But for me, as, as you get older and grow, you kind of switch your version of success in terms of what you want to achieve. And so I think it, it just evolves as you get older. Um, and so my next form of being successful, like I said, is to, to continue representing my country, win trophies with LAFC, play in Europe, play in a World Cup. Wow, that's hey, crazy. Left back. They're coming. A left back from Plano to uh, – or left back or right back from Plano to – the six for the national team. That's crazy. Who would have thought? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I just played outside. I kind of just got thrown there. I've always been a midfielder my whole life. And then at a young age, I just kind of got, got thrown at, I think, right back. Then I played a little bit of left back. And then six, I played 10. Even in the academy, I played left forward under Lucci, <laughs> scored some goals. <laughs> I hey, we got a we got a very similar academy story, brother. I, I was playing – all the positions in the academy, bro. Yeah, yeah. This man played center back. Playing as a 10, center mm -hmm. back. Yeah, because you're like 10 feet tall, bro. Of course you play center back. But I've seen you, I remember watching you playing all over, playing a little bit forward, 10, 6, winger. I mean, yeah, you know, you know the game. You know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sooner or later, I'll be stuck in at a, like in center back or maybe even goalie. You never know. But uh, <laughs> they love to push the tall guys back, you know, so. But not for I'm you. Where, where, where do you like man. to play? Like a, uh, as a like a six or an eight, like with an eight. team in at NLFC. I mean, I think for me, it depends on formation. Like if we're like ideally growing up, I mean, we play like in a four, two, three, one. So I would play it as a double pivot, and I always had a ten in front of me, so I can play off of him. So I was like kind of like a, a mobile where I was able to kind of roam wherever. That's where I found my most success. But I mean. In terms of, like, I'm kind of, like, in a weird position because I'm, like, in between a six and in between an eight. Like, I'm in that that middle ground. Um, with the Nash team, I mean, I enjoy either or. Um, I've had kind of my better games as a six for the national team. LFC I play as an eight, and I enjoy it here also. So it's hard to say what I enjoy, really, more so because I, I really enjoy them both different roles but um i'm able to adapt and you know play well with with either or i think it's important uh like with you depending who's on the field because like if if you're playing as like the more attacking eight like if you're playing with a double eight i think you need to play six i i think but i mean if you keep yeah. scoring goals then i don't know but if you got like vela in front of you or you got pulisic yeah then like you could play eight. different yeah different like i said based on the personnel and the formation is is yeah is how I can maneuver around, really. Hey, but that's your first goal for LA? Yeah, first goal. It took me long enough. <laughs> I know it's because enough. that chump chat blessed me. I knew I was coming on the air. Bro, that's the crazy it's thing. Scorable. We announced that you were coming on, and you scored literally not even, like, a couple of days later. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, we might have to do this week-by-week week thing, <laughs> you know, checking in hey. the type deal. <laughs> hey, you, well, you'll, you'll see. This next week, you might have, like, a brace or hat trick, and you'll be like, yo <laughs> – Dude, we'll be I mean, actually on be, the call. I'll, I'll be blessed for real. <laughs> and we need to get a little uh a little chum chat celebration though for the boys. If you score, and we'll just say you score in these next couple games, we need a little salute. So obviously the you're saluting for the men's team. Bro. Yeah, but yeah, a little salute. Just like that, you know. All right. The camera, you know, is easy it. enough. That's able. Yeah. I, easy. That. And you we'll know easy it's enough. chum chat related, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because we had we had Brandon Cervini on. Before he scored he the banger, I, I remember. Yeah, it's crazy, man. He uh, what a, what a strike, man. 
that was a chump chat blessing in full sight right there. The banger. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm like, Brandon, why are you even pulling up from there? Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> what a Yo, strike, I don't know what he was man. thinking, to be honest, bro. <laughs> what a strike. I couldn't believe it. He smacked it. He could always hit a ball, though, to be fair. No, always, yeah. He has always. a weird technique as well. Like, his foot, like, he – But he follows through with it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's it was so dipping weird. and swerving. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, it was a strike. Some confidence though pulling it from there for real. Though. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying. Yeah. But no, uh, man, yeah. we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Um, I guess my only question left is uh who do you want to see next on Chump Chat? Who do I want to see next on Chump Chat? You gotta get a you gotta get a real personality. You gotta get like you talking about national team wise, you gotta get like a Tim Weah. Who's a clown? Maybe even a Wes, another clown. Someone hey, you need to talk to Wes and then, bro. Because we <laughs> we reached out, obviously, the Dallas connection as well. We got, I mean, I know a bunch of his friends and his agents, but it's always been a swerve, if you know what I mean. So, but we're getting yeah, we're up in our I mean, game. So yeah, we'll, I'll see, I'll see yeah. what I can do. Um, but yeah, you need to get someone that has real, you know, personality. I'll give you some crazy academy stories to crazy stories in Europe to, you know, the whole nine yards. I mean, uh, I think one of them probably has some stories to tell. That would be some. We know uh, Weston has some crazy stories for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Tim too. You'd be surprised. I mean, there's, there's a few guys, maybe even like an Aaron Long, like low key, low key. That would be an, another good one that I think you should definitely explore. Maybe I can put out a, a good word for you guys. Yeah. Sounds good. We appreciate like you. We that. appreciate you for um, obviously for making it so easy to work. Obviously, the nine hour difference is brutal, but uh, we appreciate. Yeah, no, thank you guys. That. Yeah, I'm glad we could make it work out. I know it's late. You know, you probably got training tomorrow. I bet, but I appreciate you all for having me on the show. And uh, no, it was awesome. Hopefully, anything I'm you want to say? Waiting for my blessing. Yeah, anything right. you want to say before we do outro? Uh, in terms of what, just anything like any shout out, anything. I don't know. Shout out to my mom and my dad. No, I'm uh, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Thank you guys. No, I'm, I'm, I just want to say, you know, I'm proud of you guys. You guys are doing your thing in Europe. Keep going. I know it's it's tough. It's difficult, but uh, nah, keep keep uh, paving the way for for young guys, even old guys like me, because it's inspiring. And like I said, keep going. Yeah, I know times have been tough. It's been hard to transition, but uh, no, nah, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel. But keep working hard. You guys got it. We followed you, bro, it, bro. So thank you. I mean, you were our role yeah. model. Hopefully, yeah. we can be that for the for the younger kids. But no, thank you. Yeah, yeah you um, guys got for it. Sure, whether, bro. You, whether you guys know about it or not, you guys are. So keep going. For sure. Yeah, bro. But um, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Chum Chat. Kellen, thank you for tuning in for us for like an hour. That was crazy. Uh, we <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and uh, you know, like, share, and subscribe if you guys enjoy the content. And as we always say, go find your own success. Deuces.